we were all very excited to be a part of this competition to participate. So they had leased out a part of this land, which was part of the uh, Brigade Millennium Enclave. And they were proposing a museum to celebrate and to house Indian music, which was supposed to be an experiential museum and would be first of its kind in India, at least at that point when it started. They wanted a contemporary building. That was a very strong part of their brain. And they wanted a space that a user would come in and leave with a memory, you know, which would make an impact. So in terms of the program zoning, so the lower level we have the parking areas. This essentially would be the arrival plaza here. The plaza is the space where we felt that slowly one transitions from the busyness of the street into this idea of sound and music. So hence, while we were also engaging with other consultants, we felt that uh, this would be an apt space for this idea of sound garden. So this is where we have installations designed by Foley and uh, Swaram. Then there's also this aspect that the sound travels in big, large waves. So however high a barrier you would create on the edge, it would not uh, restrict the sound from coming in. So the instruments, what Swaram along with Aurelio, the way they designed it in such that you're not looking at fine sounds, you're looking at an experience of sound, experience of the tones. Right behind on the above, you see the learning center as well, which is one of the fundamental parts of the program. It's primarily open to students who come to learn music out here. From the plaza, you actually step down into a more private area, which is the administrative side to IME. So you have the sunken court here, which brings in light and also kind of connects you back to the plaza as well. So one of the trees was always a part of this court. So we looked at that getting this cultural kind of quality that it had. We wanted to kind of express that. So you kind of have this building wrapping around it and becoming a kind of a backdrop to this tree as well. And it participates and you would see that the tree and that column are almost in line with each other so kind of the building and the, the entire thing sort of integrates with each other so the initial idea was we wanted an exposed concrete building and the form was about a single surface that kind of splits into multiple surfaces so the column is not seen as a column but part of the surface development so you kind of uh, see the column climb up and open up and become a part of the surface. Instead of being viewed as just a columnar element, it's a part of the surface, the continuum of the surface. So then you kind of get into the space where you are buying the tickets. It's a part of the upper level plaza. And also you leave your baggage right there. So it's all properly thought out before you, how you enter the lobby space of the building, which is the enclosed lobby. So you're transitioning from a completely open space, which is essentially the street, right into the interiors. Now you know that you've arrived into this kind of space and you're ready for this experience. You enter into the lobby area and one is actually taken up in the service core. Service core is right in the heart of the development. So we have the lift core and the stair core right here. So here the idea was that you traverse through this thing all the way to the third level. You move up and then you kind of walk down through the, the gallery spaces. You walk through this and you descend to the lower level gallery and you walk and again you descend to the ground floor. So this idea of you know traversing through the building is orchestrated in a way that supports this idea of narrative and also supports this idea of how a museum needs to work. So the gallery space itself is spread over around 15,000 to 16,000 square feet. The whole thing was structured around this narrative which was about a continuous engagement versus this idea of compartmentalizing spaces and saying that this is one gallery, this is another gallery. Once you enter the third level, you are taken into this orientation theatre where again you are introduced to this idea of music and sound. And then you are led into this galleries which builds from the idea of familiarity 
to the idea of more specific, more categorized kind of a music situation where you move through all these displays. And the idea of this uh, uh, 15,000 square feet or 16,000 square feet would be an apt size you know, in terms of what a gallery should be. And it would take nearly a day to half a day if somebody were to uh, seriously engage with the displays. All these spaces are controlled environment. When I say controlled, it is controlling light, controlling the sound, even the acoustics and air quality in the space. So you move through this third floor and what is interesting is you come into this large space once you enter the gallery. Again, this space kind of squeezes and becomes narrow, which I feel is a very unique uh, dimension to this experience because you're moving from a large to a narrow space and this narrow space again engenders a certain emotional response and also gives you a sense of understanding what you've seen so far in terms of the experience. So it becomes this contemplative stretch and you will notice that there are these apertures which lend you to look out and see where you are in the context. You might see the tree that is present in the court and you, you sense that, okay, you are in the center of the development. And then you move into a space that expands again and you encounter a new space. So from the third level, now we have a, a cutout where you are given a, a preview of what is to come down. You know, you have this instrument gallery which is set up against the double height. So you can see instruments right from the upper level all the way to the lower level. So it is again the sense of continuum, how your eyes move, how you encounter things. So you go around and you take the staircase and you come down the double height space and you are in that space where you're looking at all this instrument displays. The idea of the museum is how you kind of uh, make a person experience things visually and also tactilely. So this epitomizes that aspect. It really kind of comes through where the architecture and the interiors sort of marry each other. Then you move into another gallery, another section. Mostly these are galleries that are more familiar in a way that it deals with music known through Bollywood and cinema. So it's like a loop. It is like kind of a Mobius loop. So finally, from that second level, you descend through the stair to the lower level. You are actually at the lobby, but you are not connected to the lobby at this level. So you are encountering the lobby in a different way through the staircase. The staircase itself is a very sculptural form. It kind of comes down and becomes a part of this thing. So you are taking a different path, encountering the same space in a different way. So you are actually looking at the lifts on the other side. When you're coming down, you're looking at the water body. You're actually seeing it from a higher perspective. Then you come down and you enter into this conclusion theater there. And a small gallery as well, pre-function area before the theater. And from here, one is kind of taking a bridge which goes out to the music store. As you come out of the conclusion theatre, you come into this exit ramp. This is bringing you from an enclosed space into an outdoor space. For sheltered experience, we have a skylight here, a glass roof fundamentally, and the glass is also uh, not clear glass. So it's about controlling the amount of light that's coming in as you're coming from a darker space to the outside. See, the idea of the water body is not just about being a visual feature, it is also about kind of deadening the noise from outside, kind of getting this water as a cleansing experience when you come in and when you exit as well. So the water is the only segregator between the lobby and this exit route. So it is like an interesting moat-like feature, but organizes space in a very experiential way. We are on this in the, in the middle of the exit ramp and uh, you, as you can see behind me, you see people discussing the, the journey so far or they're taking those pictures as well. So it becomes an important pace, so to note that when you exit the venue itself, so there's a place that you can remember as well, you know, as a part of your spatial experience. So the store, which is fundamental to the running of this thing in terms of revenue generation as well, it is strategically located at the termination. 
and finally once you've done your bit there in the store and you kind of step down into the uh, lower uh, level which has the cafe so now we are entering the cafe area which is more designed to be like a veranda space which is like a hangout you would come here irrespective of whether you're going into the galleries or not this is designed as a part of the museum yet having its own identity and also the fact that from here you connect into the learning center as well and you can also get a glimpse of the music store so you can also access the music store from here you have a donors wall here so the people who have contributed to the project have their names put up there and also you have elements like the skylights which are feeding light down into the basement also become a part of this furniture that you see as a part of the fixed furniture everything kind of coalesces to become a part of each other the basic mission of this museum is to cater to the younger generation to understand to appreciate experience museum and to build a community through music we provide diploma course to more than 125 children in more than 8 to 9 disciplines of music this museum as i told is a 10 year old project the Bhumi Pujan was done in 2009 and the grand launch was done in 2019 by Ustad Zakir Hussain and since the grand launch till date we have had more than 80000 footfalls at the Indian Music Experience Museum it's very interesting and uh, very important for an urban fabric for a urban level city fabric where museums are normally not dealt with well, becomes a important icon or a marker for a city where it, it talks about uh, culture tradition it talks about so many layers that it stand to depict and of course in this whole idea of globalization where data is available anywhere you kind of never experience it in person you know so the museum becomes a anchor in that respect that you would walk into it and actually enjoy it and feel it and have a sensorial education in the whole process so that that was very important in educating and very challenging for us to look at when it came to dealing with the design of the museum